Hello friends, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. It is the end of April, beginning of May, and this is a time of year that can be very difficult for us northern gardeners. Anyone who's on social media at all has seen some of our southern gardening garden friends already out in their gardens planting warm weather things for in some cases the past month or more we still have me here in nova scotia um, i still have probably almost a month before i can think about even putting tomatoes or peppers outdoors along with my beloved dahlias and zinnias and all those warm warm weather loving things and it's easy to get a case of the jealousies this time of year. So today I wanted to talk about some of the benefits, some of the pros to living in a colder, colder zone. By no means, you know, am I trying to say one zone's better than another zone? They all have their pros and cons. But today this is all about making my northern gardening friends feel better about where we are and how many more days we still have to go before we can join in and on the warm weather fun. So first I guess I'll clarify, I am a zone five Canadian growing zone. There are differences between the Canadian system and the American system and I think that is a video that I'll make in the future. I see a lot of comments um, made that may be applicable to the USDA um, system, and it's not quite the same here. But we'll get into that later. Um, for now, the rule of thumb is kind of that whatever your Canadian growing zone is, the USDA equivalent is about one zone less. So if I'm a Canadian zone five, that's pretty comparable to a USDA zone four just so you know where I am at and where I am coming from. So what is a benefit to living in the frigid north? One of the benefits is typically fewer pests, not necessarily and not, not for all pests, but because of our length of frozen period over winter, a lot of the life cycles of many pests are disrupted and we kind of get a clean slate, so to speak, in spring every year. So we're not wintering over a lot of, or as many pests as some of our Southern gardening friends. And that's true for both, um, you know, pests of plants, but also some of the pests that pest humans too. So, you know, one example might be ticks. We do have ticks here and they've steadily been increasing, um, but there are many zones north of me that don't have ticks and many areas of Canada that still are relatively tick free. There may be certain species of ticks there, but they tend to not be the ones that either carry Lyme disease or tend to not bother humans as much. So pests is one of the benefits, or fewer pests is one of the benefits of living in a more Northern zone. Another benefit of a cooler climate is some of the perennial edible crops. Um, rhubarb and asparagus are two that I grow that I know have an easier time here. Um, I, I, and I'm by no means am I saying you can't grow these in the South. I know lots of people grow both of these very successfully in a wide range of zones, but typically they're very planted and forget it here. Um, for some of the most southern zones in the U.S., um, rhubarb is often grown as an annual from seed every year. 
And here, it's very much, you know, you can plant it either from seed or purchase a crown and you can plant it. And there are old homesteads here that have dug up 100-year-old rhubarb patches or come across 100-year-old rhubarb patches. It really is a low-maintenance um, crop for us here. Asparagus is much the same, and while it can be perennial in some of the southern zones, it tends to not be as long-lived. So for me here, I can plant it, and it is going to give me 20 to 30 years at least of reward in crop. And it seems to need that dormancy rest period to give it that prolonged life and for an example like you can abuse asparagus um here Jarrett's parents actually when they bought their house like 45 years ago they had a patch of asparagus in their front lawn but they didn't know that's what it was and they mowed over it for like 30 years they mowed over it um didn't didn't let the the um ferns develop didn't realize that it was asparagus and they could eat it. Um, and 10 or 15 years ago, one of their neighbors or one of their friends actually told them what it was growing in the lawn. And since then, Jared's mother has harvested it every spring and frozen it so they have asparagus all year long. And it is still producing their annual need of asparagus. So it can be very long lived here. That patch was probably at least 50 plus years old. That's crazy. So that's another good reason or another benefit to living in the frigid north. Okay, next up is just like some of the perennial edibles, some of our perennial florals also need that cold rest period um, or our northern conditions in order to really thrive. So two examples that I can think of right offhand is tulips. Tulips need a chill period in order for them to flower. So if you're in the south, you can definitely, you know, purchase pre-chilled bulbs or you can chill them yourself and you will get tulips, but they don't really perennialize in your landscape like they do in a colder zone. So here I can plant tulips in my perennial beds and they come back year after year and flower for me. They get the proper chilling that they need in the environment. Another flower that a perennial flower that people have difficulty with in southern zones is delphinium. They they need that cool climate and if you've never seen delphiniums they're beautiful and you can get away with um, you know larkspur is closely related you can plant it as an annual pretty much across zones but they're not nearly as as large and beautiful as a delphinium and I've heard lots of southern gardeners wishing they could grow them. Okay, the fourth benefit to living in a cooler zone is some of those quick bolting crops are slower to bolt here for us. I'm not a huge cilantro fan, but if you are a cilantro fan, um, it's much slower to bolt here than it is in a warmer zone. Some other things that you might find are slower to bolt is some of the brassica crops. So um, broccoli, cauliflower, um, even bok choy, things like that. Lettuce, these things will, especially if you take care to plant them in a shadier spot in your garden, we can grow them all summer. Whereas a lot of the Southern zones, you know, they have specific windows in the spring and the fall where they can be grown without them bolting um, or going to seed before they're ready to harvest. So that is a pro for us. 
Okay, so the final pro to living in a northern zone is that we get a break. We get a break in the winter time. And I think having that break actually prolongs my interest in gardening. I think there would be a risk of burnout if we could grow all year round, like some of our, you know, more southern gardening friends can. And I think this keeps the excitement and the interest alive, at least in me and my personality type. And it also helps me ensure I have a successful gardening season because I have a shorter growing zone than many of the other regions. I think that helps me plan during the off season and helps ensure that I have a successful growing season while, while I can plant outdoors. I typically have some kind of a plan in mind, whether I stick exactly to it or not. I know about how many things I wanna grow, a general area of where I wanna grow them. And I have time to plan for that and ensure that the season is a success. Lola might be coming over to say hello. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I hope some of these silver linings are silver linings for you as well. And I hope they keep help keep your jealousy monster um, at bay this time of year. I know mine certainly is raging. Um, but I just have to remember that there are, there are benefits to living here as well. And those are some of the ones that I like to think about, especially right now when I'm just itching and dying to get outdoors. So... Um, I would love to hear, you know, what are the pros and cons of where you live? Um, did I miss anything? Do you have any suggestions, any more suggestions, any more silver linings? I'd love to hear them. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a wonderful growing season. I'm happy that you joined me here today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching.